Hi, everyone. Today is Friday, November 25th of 2022, and we are here with Moo for the weekly crypto review. Did I just rhyme? You did. You've been rhyming a lot lately on the intro. <laughs> we see a lot of things um, actually posting in the, the Discord room under Europe. Um, I noticed that uh, somebody posted a link to a Reddit where somebody had had their pigs, um, one of their pigs were slaughtered and a bunch were stolen in uh, in Britain. And, you know, it was like for food. And yeah. they're starting to see, you know, that come to true where people are having to choose between, you know, heat, heating their home or being able to eat three meals a day. And some are cutting back even to two and they're still not able to heat their home. So, um, you know, it's, it's, we were here, you know, a couple of years ago, we were talking about all of that stuff. It's all coming true. Um, I did see cryptos going to $100 trillion, but be between here and there, I mean, we all know that we're here for early days. I mean, that's, that's the price we pay for our, you know, crypto, I guess you can call it lottery ticket where really, you know, anybody like you just need a couple of cryptos. And then when the wave comes in, you know, just remember this time to some of you press the button. I know, I know a lot of you did and you took some profits and you're feeling pretty good about yourself and stuff, but other people are not feeling so good because sure. they didn't take profits, but that's okay. You know, I just let people know, Hey, it's coming again, but do it this time because the next time you might have, you know, a little bit longer of a wait. Cause really we haven't had to wait that long for it to, to we won't have to wait that long for it to turn around. Um, but it looks like, I think that cryptos are going to start following the stock market again. I think the stock market is going to, um, go for that run for the 42,000. So when it, we, I, you actually called the bottom at 18, I was seeing more like that it would be under 20, but you called the bottom at, I, we'd have to go back. But I remember uh, telling yeah. my brother-in-law that who was doing some trading and he, he was trying to decide when to get into the market. And I said, Oh, you start buying when it's around 20. I said, cause I think it's going to go back up to about 42. But I always tell people like, don't, don't push it right to the edge. I mean, that's crazy. I just think about Judy where she put it in the cell. She wrote me about Theta and she goes, do you think it's going to go to $15? I was like, oh, I said it might go to 15. So she put in a cell at 1475 that was filled. And then her, her uh, she was telling me at the meetup and then her $15 cell for Theta that it was not filled. So I was like, I always put it in like, you know, I always put it in lower than the, than what I, you know, what I expect the price or generally to go to. Cause I do find that the people on the other side, just, they just, they round off for me. Like we saw on that reading video um, with, uh, I think his name is David. He's in, he is in uh, Poland and uh, it was really good. He was like, he's, he's like, I, I owe somebody some money. And he goes, how much is it? And I was like, Oh, like $10,000. And he, and then I, I got it. I think he, I think it was like, maybe I'd have to ask him, was it like 96 or 9,700? Because remember, if somebody said to you, I owe somebody some money, how much is it? And then they say, you know, 10,000. But then they tell you, he started to laugh when I said, oh, well, they they round it up. They always round it off for me. Like, it's easier for me to see just the the bigger number with the zeros than to sure. try to say, oh, you owe them $9,732. <laughs> like, I don't think that would ever happen. Yeah. Um, What was I going to say? I don't know. I got sidetracked. Um, uh, it'll come back to you. Or it might <laughs> go on. I don't know. <laughs> I, I think this is wonderful that we can get together today. We get, you know, we normally get together on Fridays or Thursday. So, you know, getting together on a Friday at a different time, I think is kind of neat for people. You've been busy traveling. Uh, I've got a lot of kind of family and holiday things going on. So this is cool. I'm glad we can kind of mix it up a little bit. Maybe, um, um, I don't know, maybe we could do that in the future, kind of make it at, at different times sometimes. Um, uh, so, cause I, I bet, I, I wonder if I'm noticing some different names over on the right hand side. So it's kind of neat. Maybe, uh, people are able to join us today that aren't, aren't necessarily able to join us. Um, yeah. And well, so, where I am, it's like eight o'clock in the morning. So okay. I got up at around six thirty. Um, you know, I'm going to, where I'm going to, there's a four hour time difference from where I was. Yeah. So yeah, I'm definitely open for, you know, time changes on some of the shows that we do. But uh, we only have 21 questions this morning. So I don't think we're going to go for the whole two hours. And I just want to say hi to those of us who join us today. We got Brenda and I can still see Dan and Dragonfly though. And uh, Mellow's here and Purple Rose. Nice to see you, Purple. It must be uh, afternoon where Purple Rose is at. And Christopher yeah. Xavier is here as well as who do we have? Uh, 
Callie's here and Ren, DJ, and uh, yeah, the little J, Ren, and is it Sep? Did I say that right? Sep, Bradley J. Uh, oh, we have Rockstar Trader. Welcome. I think this is Rockstar Trader's uh, first live stream with us. And we have Harrison. And uh, if I missed anybody, sorry, I see Andre's in now. Um, so we've got uh, about 63 people in the house. We've got 167 registered. And uh, we'll get started this morning with the first question, a top voted. Yeah, 17 votes uh, from this question uh, by Limit Break. It says, of the close to 1,000 solid Sam Jammers here, curious to know what percentage do the people on the other side see staying in the crypto landscape in the future? And will they do well? Question mark. And then there's more to this question. Um, I understand others will be fully cashing out and retiring on their gains, mostly in hard assets. Do you see those in crypto for the long term participate in more secure, private and regulated DeFi and able to put their digital assets to work and live comfortably? off the interest. Appreciate all you do, Sam and Moose. So let's break this up. Um, they mentioned a thousand Sam jammers. And uh, do you see the people on the other side uh, see, I guess, these people that he's referencing uh, staying in the crypto landscape in the future? And will they do? Well, well? there are actually um, more in the neighborhood. Uh, we run between 550 and 600 Sam jammers right now. I think we had an all time high of around 700. But that would have been, you know, when the market was like 3 trillion. And sometimes people, um, when that happens, a lot of people find this channel and they're really looking for like trading information. They want to be into trading, like buying, selling, buying, selling. And my timelines are too long for that. Um, as we saw with my blab on Terra Luna that I was, if anybody checks my channel under the crypto predictions, um, we did a really good one on Terra Luna and and it was kind of crazy how I didn't even see that one. I'm like, oh, where did that come from? I didn't even see it. It was like in the top 10. And I was like, oh, well, I guess you can't buy them all. And oh, well, things will change quick, could change quickly. And I believe in my cryptos for the long term. Like I I, I buy and I hold. Um, you know, not saying that I, I don't jump off when I get like a very quick 15 or 20 times on a crypto. I mean, we've had a few of those, like with Aave, that was one that you really liked and sure. I got really excited about. And that goes back to sort of the DeFi question that uh, Limit Break had. Um, but just want, I do want to say though, that there are not, well, I know that it says on the Discord that there's a thousand, but that's people who have, some people have left and they can't get access. But I do believe that the majority, um, the majority, like I would say about 500 have been around like for a couple of years now, like for a long time. And, uh, some people, I mean, I saw a loss shaker and that was at his, he's been at four meetups now. So yeah, it's, yeah, uh, yeah it's, I, I think it's going to be long-term for a lot of people. I know that I'm still, I mean, I, yes, I'm cashing out and putting money into hard assets. Um, and that's only because when you put in, let's say you take 25% of your net asset worth. And I mean, keep in mind that when I got into cryptos, I was in my late forties. You know, people are like, oh, you have no wrinkles. It's not from all the clean living. <laughs> but I will stay, but I, I will stay in cryptos as far as, um, you know, doing that correction on my assets. So, for example, you know, having something like Dogecoin, you know, go you, you put in a very small amount and then it goes to such a huge number. Well, at one point, you know, you have to take out your profits and do something with it because I am going to sort of sort through things and have my my um net a my net asset worth so that more no more than 25 percent is in cryptos some people it will be less than that just because you know if you're like 75 years old some people buy for their parents my mother oh my gosh god love her she's turning 83 and she tried to get me to put money in cryptos for her and i just i refused i was like you know mom you're in your 80s and i don't think my siblings would be too impressed i mean sure they'll they'll be happy if you know if I had stuck it in Doge, right? And and then she had, you know, eight hundred thousand dollars in Doge. Oh, they they'd be totally all right with that. But the thing is, is that you know everything is great when when things go well. But really, I just like to stick with and hang out with people who believe in cryptos and are in blockchain for the reason I'm in, which is to um, bank the unbanked and to get rid of the financial services industry and the corruption. I mean, I don't even, after what I heard about the pension plans in the United States, I mean, they're in the same boat as like my husband's um, provincial pension plan. I, I showed it to him. I said, baby, I said, you're not going to be able to live off of this. I mean, they only made 
um, 0.4% return on your money. Like this is not going to work out for you. And then, you know, who knows with the mismanagement and everything. So I'm in cryptos for the long term. I want to support it. Um, I want to support blockchain. Um, I'm glad that the that cryptos is getting cleaned out, like of all the criminals. This is like the early days. Remember the internet when, you know, you had all the, all it, it was like either phishing or pornography it was like 50% of the right. internet back in the 1990s when it started. Remember AOL, America Online? We all yep. got those little discs in the mail that, you know, you could do your dial up and and, uh, you know, you were limited on your bandwidth. If you were a bandwidth hog, you were your neighbor's enemy. I was explaining that to my son the other day. I was like, oh, yeah, you know how I do a live stream? And I'm like, I'm like, are you kids on the Internet? Are you playing games? Like, get off right now because I don't want any buffering. Right. But that used to be the way for the whole street back when you had dial up. And like I said, criminals were everywhere. And it's the same with, um, you know, the cryptocurrencies. And a lot of people asked me if I got burnt by FTX closing and I was like, no. And um, I did, however, have uh, $50,000 on Gemini, which I pulled out afterwards. Um, it was not in Gemini Urn because we had a discussion about that back when people were asking about it. And I said, you have to ask, you have to ask where they're getting this higher return. And yeah. then, you know, when I found out the principal wasn't guaranteed, I was like, oh, well, I'm no, no way they're getting my dose from me. Right. So because I did have some Doge on uh, Gemini getting ready to sell for the summer of Doge that did not come. Some people are like, oh, is it still coming? I'm like, oh, yeah, it's still coming. Like, I mean, you pretty much see that now with Twitter. They're talking about Twitter being like YouTube and the people and creators will get compensated. What if we're compensated in Doge? Very, very cool. Yeah, I could totally see that being a, a, a currency for the platform. It would need some uh, innovations to be able to handle that kind of throughput, uh, that kind of TPS, but uh, could totally be possible. Um, it, and I think both you and I, we were just kind of chatting in the green room that uh, we think Twitter is going to be a competitor of YouTube. And we think it's going to do very well as they kind of, we think they're both going to go to some sort of long form uh, video rather than, uh, I don't know what they're going to now, what, two minutes, mm -hmm. two minutes and 10 seconds. Yeah. Yeah. And people who were at the meetup that I had in um, Dallas just three days ago, I had a blab because I got my first channel strike and it was for the Epstein Chronicles. So, um, you know, somebody's got the back of the, of the pedos, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> and then it was explained to me that um, it was coming out that if you had the blue check mark that you could upload videos. So the first thing I'm going to upload, I'm going to get the blue check mark. The first thing I'm going to upload is going to be the Epstein Chronicles. And um, remember, when I first started my channel, I said that I would have four years that I would be doing cryptos. And then after that, I wasn't quite sure. Um, I thought for a minute there I might apply to the Securities and Exchange Commission, and I but I would demand that Mr. Burns would have to be gone. You don't get my expertise with that. I love it. I love it. Piece of crap there. I just can't. I hope he goes to jail too, jerk. Um, you know they're the reason why a lot of these problems are there. Listen, that wouldn't have happened on my watch. I'll tell you right now because I I could tell you some stories from back in the day when I did compliance for my own branch and some of the people I caught doing stuff. I actually caught somebody trying to launder money from um, land that he's money that he stole from people out in British Columbia. Anyways, he got caught. But again, you know, it's all about, um, you know, making sure that you have procedures in place to protect the customers. Or in our case, it was the children because um, this guy would have um, utilized their maximum education fund limit, which in Canada is 50,000. And he would have put it in and then he would have canceled it. And then they would have had their 50,000 limit. Like you don't get it back kind of thing. Gotcha. When you use it. So again, very important with compliance to um, have your customers back, um, keep these criminals out of the system. Um, for me, knowing blockchain, this would be easy for me. I called my husband. I asked him and he said, no. <laughs> I called no. him. I was like, Can I? He was like, he goes, I thought you were looking to work less and not more because but see he's thinking i'll still be doing like everything right and i said no no i said i wouldn't do that i said i'm just listening to the people on the other side and they told me four years ago that i would be shifting gears and uh i was thinking okay well we'd pretty much be out of the woods by then right we'd probably be tracking for trillions at that point feel pretty safe in our cryptos and i wouldn't need to do the hand holding as much so that being the case just with my timeline from four years ago, I'm looking at it and okay, four years will be up in early 2023. That's when I started my Patreon. I got my first strike 
Um, I don't give a crap, right? <laughs> you know, their loss. I'll just do something else. I'll, um, I still have my Patreon and I'll still be accessible to you guys. So don't worry. Don't have a fit. Someone was like, oh, are you going to leave? I'm like, no, no, not the Sam Jammers. You guys trained me. You guys helped me out. You guys, uh, even Barton, you know, I, he asked me when he went on his trip if he had anything to look out for. And I told him about his tires and he ended up actually blowing a tire. Yeah. Um, and then he posted on the discord that that happened. And yeah. I have all kinds of people posting that stuff happened, you know, that I told them about, whereas if I had just been doing readings, people would leave. And then I would wonder if I never heard from them again, I would wonder how many things came true. But even at the meetups, um, I had a lot of people do follow ups and say, you know, this came true, and that came true. And that gives me more and more confidence to talk to you guys about the cryptos and even with interest rates. I mean, my mortgage, you guys, as you know, uh, my mortgage comes up to renewal on December 17th. Two years ago is when I said it. It was locked in rate 1.84%. Booyah. Anyways, it's going to be a lot higher now, but that's nothing new to me. I got my first mortgage in 1991 and my interest rate was nine and a quarter percent. I tell the young people that I'm like, no, oh, that's normal, man. Like 6%. No, that's all good. Like, don't worry. That's, that's like our old people can live off of their pension money. But yeah, I just wanted to mention that as well, that now it looks like the Fed's going to pivot, um, interest rates. See, I'm going to take a variable on December 17th, and then I'll lo I can do that for up to six months. And they'll, they can do it for longer than that, but I'll just take a six month variable. And that's what I'm feeling. Like interest rates will go on a little bit more of a dive. We're going to go on a, I believe that cryptos are going to follow the stock market again. And we're going to have that another, we're going to have that, that, that big run that I talked about where people were so worried. They were like, oh, I didn't take profits. Oh, I had millions of dollars. And now I only have a few hundred thousand. And, and it's like, well, no, that's, that's okay. You know, cause remember you started with 25,000 in and yes, it sucks. You're down to 530,000 from your 25,000, but you know, yes, it would be better to have pressed the button at 3 million, but I see the market's going to be like super huge in, you know, five years. So you, do you want to be in or not in? I don't know exactly which coins, you know, five years from now will be good. But, you know, let's see if we got some more good questions here to see if we can drill some more stuff out on uh, what's going to happen in the market. Sounds good. Thanks, Sam. Uh, Chris says, hello and thank you. Are you seeing a hard rally into January 2023? If yes, how strong will that rally be? Isn't that weird? I just answered it. Okay, so I'm going to say done answering. Yep. And for those of you, for, for anyone who's new, this is a regular thing, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yep, yeah. happens a lot. Um, even when you and I are talking privately, it happens. Uh, Digital Assets, Jared, has got one. Hey, Sam and Moo, do you see Reef and XYO hitting at least 50 cents in 2023? Thank you both. Yeah, geez, a lot of people, we have a dollar cost average on that. Uh, I know mine for XYO is like half a penny. So nice to easy to get seven figures in that. And uh, Reef, oh my gosh, I had between one and four cents on Reef. And then when it went down below, I bought a whole bunch and I just destroyed my dollar cost average. So that's really low as well. Um, those were more longer term. Reef, I think that, I think we might get, to, I think that Reef might go up before XYO. That's what I'm feeling like. Because a lot of people were saying that Reef was affected by Alameda, but it wasn't. Um, they they did have and I mean, Moo, correct me if I'm wrong here, but my understanding is that they put the run on Sam Bakerman Freed when he wanted the source code and all that stuff. And they just got, got kind of an icky feeling from him. And they so they don't have any money. They didn't have any money in FTX. And when I watched a video of the the lead dev uh, for Reef, um, somebody uh, on the Discord, they sent me the video to watch. And it was it was a good interview and stuff. And I watched him talking. I was seeing pictures around him and I was like, yeah, I said, he wants to be in the top five for what Reef does, like the top five of all the coins. And I, I feel like that's true. I feel like that's going to happen and that it would happen like within a couple of years. So we started buying Reef. I think it was like two years ago. It was between one and four cents. And, um, and then XYO. Yeah. So XYO after that, now is it going to hit 50 cents? Um, yeah, I think that when we see the market running to 3 trillion, some of the coins that did really well last time, they may lay flat, but the ones, some of the ones that we hold are really going to go on a big run. I got a, I had a blab the other week that, that three of what we hold, um, most of us like the Sam jammers. And, and then I had a little flash in a picture of polka dot, but that might've been because the regulators came up that it's uh, software. So that might've been, I was like, okay, well, 
Good. I think most of us have polka dot. Um, just wanted to reference back when you mentioned uh, Reef and um, and FTX. Uh, there was this article that came out in March of last year, where you're right. Reef was aware that FTX was doing some strange things. Um, you know, <clears throat> I don't want to get into it uh, necessarily, but basically there was an eighty million dollar deal. Um, between Reef and Alameda. And Reef had offered a 20% discount on the tokens to promote synergies between uh, Serum and Solana, two projects, right, under uh, Alameda, or that Alameda was heavily um, involved in. But they notice here, it says, with the conflict, well, I'll just skip here. For the first 20 million tranche, we followed the movement of sold reef tokens and immediately saw that the tokens we had transferred to Alameda were being offloaded on the Binance exchange. Um, we could not understand why Alameda, a long-term strategic, strategic investor, would offload their tokens immediately after uh, purchase to, to Binance. So this just, and this was back in March, right? This is back in March 16th of uh, 2021. So, you know, there's, there's, there's been games like this played um, that people in the industry, uh, you know, cryptos and companies and different things, networks have seen some shady things, right? With FTX. So what I would say to you is that, yeah, Alameda, they did invest and did have some, <clears throat> connections with Reef, but Reef uh, also long before uh, any of this FTX stuff uh, kind of came to light, they were they were saying that there was some shady, strange OTC things going on uh, with their token that they didn't really appreciate. And there's been so many now, so many networks and, and tokens and companies and coding houses and you name it coming out now saying, you know, we were extorted, right? Or we were put in a bad position by them uh, basically being extorted out of our tokens. So um, so that's just to kind of give you some confirmation, Sam, is what I was trying to do there. But let's go ahead. Yeah, on to this. No, thanks. Thanks for that. I appreciate that. And I mean, sure. I, we do hold a lot of reef. It's one of the it's one of the few ones that, you know, um, Spencer, who's only 19 years old, also holds reef. So, I mean, Doge, reef, you know, the ones that the real big runners that we see. But we do like to spread our bets in it. But I do feel like that is a good like long-term one. And I was very proud of the reef team to see that. And I think refinance um, is going to become a bigger deal. Just going back to the original question about people doing DeFi. When I explained to somebody that, you know, I would like maybe to get a mortgage in the future for properties that I'm buying um, through decentralized finance, and then I can just do it myself. I can just go on and um, figure out which mechanism I can use. I, I like, I really like Aave. I think mm -hmm. that that is, uh, that's a strong one. And it has a lot of really great devs on it and a really good team. It's uh, been around a while. So it means they've already made a few mistakes and it also has, um, I think more liquidity than a lot of other ones have. So I don't know why I'm going off on a blab for Aave. Maybe that one's going to go for a run this week. Cause we were talking about chain link the other week and I see that it's up 10%. So it is. yeah. So let's, uh, Let's just go with the blab. <laughs> Tim's got one here. Uh, says, hold on one second. Hey, Sam and Moon, may I ask about XTZ, so Tezos and ADA versus, say, Polkadot and Matic? Jeez, oh, I wouldn't give up any of those, really. I mean, I happen to hold all four of those. Um, you know, and I, I mean, I don't go into stuff normally putting in like huge amount of money. Um, you know, being a psychic medium, I'm not really allowed because, you know, you see what you see and you're not really allowed to go out and bet the farm on it because then it becomes like gambling. Then the dark entities look at you and go, oh, she's a light worker, but we see she has like, she's got a little chink in her armor here. We can get her all excited about because gambling, I've, I've seen people and what happens to them when they gamble. There was a lady that used to be um, on the trips with us with the company that I used to be with. And I remember it was the first time I'd ever seen it where she, when she, she was one of the first ones off the bus and she managed to get into a casino before everyone else. And when she came out, it was almost like she was high, like she was high, like she, her sure. eyes were glazed over. She was giggling. She, you know, this, this 50 something year old woman <laughs> was giggling. And after being on an airplane and a long bus ride, it was like she had gotten this fix. Right. Yep. And for some reason, the people on the other side made me take note of that. And I talked to someone about this the other day and I said, you know, I said, it's really interesting that, you know, it, 
of all the things, like I don't have any addictions. I've just never been, just, I don't. And I think that's really, really important when you do what I do. And uh, you got to be careful with the money thing. Um, so, you know, I don't want anyone to think by my lack of investment in a certain crypto or someone asked me, um, why did you sell off your doge at some at 40 and 60 cents? Um, even though, you know, it's going to go to a dollar and pass that. And I just explained that I had to set an example. That's why I'm in cryptos to set an example. I'm, you know, it's not so much to make money, even though I will make money, I'll, I'll make a lot of money, but, you know, I wanted to stay away from, um, you know, putting in such huge amounts of money because the other thing too, is that when you get a big downside like this, you're not freaking out. You're not over, you know, I'm not over committed to the crypto market. I still have the other 75% of my assets are over here. You know, I've got this much money in crypto. So again, I do caution people with that, like spread your bets. Like I love Tezos. I love Cardano. Um, I'm just, sta I'm staking that in my Yuri wallet. Um, I love Dot. I've got that in my Poker wallet. And, uh, and I hate to admit it, but I just have my Matic on my, on my MetaMask. So I'm being a little bit irresponsible there because it's not secured with my ledger. It's something I have to get around to doing. But again, yeah. <laughs> For sure. Yeah. I, I hope that people are always uh, securing their hardware or software wallets with hardware. Um, and then, you know, if, if VPNs can be a concern too, at least people are talking about it now. You know, um, <clears throat> you know your IP address when you access things, um, if you're using uh, anything in crypto, uh, it's it's not that hard to run an analysis to tie an IP address to to a crypto address. Um, so, you know, I hope people are using VPNs and things like this. Why? Um, it's not to obfuscate necessarily. It's just it's just like, do you lock your doors when you leave your house? Because I do. Um, so it's it's kind of just more like that. I hope people are being safe and, and practicing yes. good security. Practices. Well, even the Tezos Foundation, um, there was an email sent out recently that we talked about a couple of weeks ago, and it looked very much like we get them from Coinbase a lot. But I, I, this was the first one that I got from te supposedly Tezos. But when I looked at it, I was like, oh, OK, you know what? I don't think. And I went into the Tezos um, Foundation website, but not through the link that they sent me. I don't click on those. I go through wow. and just to remind people again, don't click on those links. Like Don't go and Google those. it and look for the the green check mark that prove you know this this is where you get the Exodus wallet this is where you get your MetaMask this is where you look on the Tezos Foundation and they actually had a list on the top of the scam addresses yep. and when you look down the drop down oh my gosh there were so many of them yep. and then I looked at the um, the Tezos Foundation the address that was sent and it was a scam and when you when when you compared the two sites. The, pay, the page that they didn't have was the one that had all the scam sites. They didn't copy that. And they also had on the very sort of lead page, they had a, this fake article about, see what they were trying to do is they were trying to get you to give your Tezos to them for, I don't know, it was like a 20% annual return, you know, but then That's you end up with zero, right? A lot of yeah. people, you know, who had Celsius or BlockFi, yeah, you were making a good return, but then they took it all. Right. So now you got zero. So that's, you know, sort of like I said, you just say anyone offers you an interest rate where they can't explain where it comes from. Like I know where the interest, where I know where the money on the URI comes from. It's not an outrageous yep. amount. It's just like 4%. It's not crazy. You know, um, my mortgage renewal is probably variable rate 5.2%. So again, you know, it's not like this crazy interest rate. If someone's sending you something, and you know, it's like 8, 10, 12%. And as I, you know, ask yourself this question, well, my mortgage is 3% locked in for 30 years. You can't get a 30 year in Canada, by the way. That's why <laughs> I'm forced to renew. Um, sure. You know, but again, just use your common sense when you're in cryptos as well. Yeah. Um, it, it, and I guess, it, you know, people should always just ask themselves if it sounds too good to be true. It It is. Okay. It always is. Um, so be careful out there, you guys. Um, next one here from Petra. Uh, hey, Sam and Moo. With the current fiasco with FTX, et cetera, does the other side see a prompt regulatory move and when? So there's other things in this question. Uh, Mark Moss sees, seems to think that there isn't another bull run and that all cryptos will be judged as securities except Bitcoin. One would think that people are so upset with the SEC and all the rest of the crooks are on their toes now is Gary Gensler out? So a lot of stuff in this question. 
So um, I think Gary Gensler is going to be out. Like I said on my cover letter to the Securities and Exchange Commission, I'll make it pretty clear I'm, if they want me, I'm not working for him. <laughs> Sorry, that's just the way it is. I just, I can't, you know, I, I can't work for somebody like that um, because that is just a special case of stupid going on. And the worst part about it is that this guy knows blockchain as well. So there's absolutely no reason uh, for this to happen except that, I don't know, man, like, you know, it's, if you've been a nerd all your life, which maybe he has been at MIT, yeah, probably. Okay. So, I mean, normally I would like people like Gary Gensler because he like is a fellow new nerd and I, I get him. I am like, oh yeah, you're a nerd too. I get you. <laughs> you like this stuff. But the fact that he was ready to, um, it, it almost seemed like uh, going with popularity and people will like you. And I don't know what, <sighs> anyways, I would say that um, he's going to be out and they are going to come up with, uh, I mentioned a, th a few weeks ago that they would have like, I call it loose regulatory. It's sort of like the quick, you know, like when I, when I first start, when I first uh, bought my agency, there, there was no policy manual. So I had, to, I had to make one. I had to put, I had to come up with something real quick. Right. You know, yeah. like um, make sure, sure your client's files are in a locked room. So the babysitter can't go through. Because we right. had paper copies of all people's SIN numbers, banking, and all that stuff. So I was going through, I was thinking to myself, okay, all, where's all the ways that people can kind of break into our fund or steal people's information or just make trouble, you know, for others or try to manipulate it so they could take money out? Because I've seen that too. You know, I've caught people doing that as well. Um, so I, I think it's along those lines where, where they'll come in and they'll be like, okay, we got to have we got to have some loose regulatory rules like right away because this is just getting out of hand now, right? And people are looking at us and yes, it is our fault. Um, but what it comes down to is that there's not enough people who know blockchain. Like there's just not. So um, it's really important that, uh, you know, if, if anybody's watching this and you have a background in finance and compliance like I do and you know blockchain, I mean, I've been in it for five years. So I'm not like Moo. I, I can't do the stuff that Muan's a developer and uh, knows more of the intricacies of blockchain. I'm more of a, you know, okay, well, let's talk about is it, is, you know, is this an ERC 20? Is it, is it Bitcoin? Is, you know, it's like, I know the language. I know the differences. I know some of the different things that can be done. And for me, it's an easy read because I love this stuff. Like I'm really interested in it. And that's really, I think the key is that we need to get some people who, um, are, would help with the regulation, but they really, they have to be sort of into blockchain because it also is, it's moving very quickly. I'm sure, Moo, that you've been just learning. I mean, can you even keep up with all the, I mean, Polkadot is a totally different thing from, um, you know, Polygon and, oh, it's just, it's wild, isn't it? Yeah, I, I tend to like things that don't have an end to the rainbow. You know, you could never. So I, I'm into music. I'm into engineering. I'm into computers. I'm into crypto. Uh, I'm into esoteric kind of ideas and thoughts. You know, I <clears throat> I like things that uh, you can just go and go and go and go and never get to the end. You can never know it all. So I, I like things like that. And crypto is one of those things. And you know, you just got to be on it. You got to be on it. It has to be a hobby. It has to be a labor of love, you know, um, I think for people to be, you know, to continue to learn and get better and, and grow and become more and more familiar with the different networks and chains and how they operate and how do they operate. And um, yeah, so anyway, that's kind of what I would say. 